Hi, I'm Tim. In this video, I'm going to talk about power and radio control systems for your Guilo's bottle conversion to radio control flight. Let's get to it. I get asked a lot about converting Guilo's free flight models to radio control flight. I've had the opportunity to convert six Squilos models to RC flight. They fly absolutely well. I'm going to put a playlist up now of the collection of all those videos. Um, I'll add additional videos to it because I convert, convert additional models. For now, let's take a look at the flight of two of my Squilos conversions, the Arrow and the Hellcat. At the end of this video, I'll go through the Guilo's catalog. We'll discuss in a little bit more detail or pictures of the various models. But what I wanted to highlight now is when I do my Guilo's conversion, I divide the Guilo kit line into three general classes or categories of aircraft. One is the lightweight class. And what I mean by lightweight, this is the Aronka. The weight comes in at under three ounces, and it's a trainer type airplane, high wings, fairly sta stable characteristics. The next one is what I call the medium class, typical of the Japanese Zero. Uh, this is a 28 inch model. The reason I call this medium, due to the low wing and the aerobatic nature of the full scale airplane, the model is, is zips right along. And so you need a little bit different power and control system for a model like this, and it absolutely comes in at a weight greater than three ounces for reasons that will be important later on. The final class that I want to discuss are the Guilo's Giant Scale. There's four, uh, five models in this Giant Scale series. This is a Guilo's Hel uh, Hellcat, about a 34-inch wingspan. Um, the weight is about 12 ounces. And this has unique power requirements for this because it's a larger model. So let's talk some more detail about the power systems and control for these. For the lightweight model, what I do under three ounces is I use the Park Zone line of microelectronics. I'll put a card up now with complete instructions where to get it. I recommend Steve Zero, although a Google search will produce um, other sources of this um, uh, equipment. The Park Zone system consists of what I call a brick. These two little devices here are linear servos that go back and forth. The receiver, electronic speed control is built in. This is a connector for the batteries. This is the antenna. This is the little LiPo single cell battery that is plugged into here to power this entire system. And this is the micro motor. It's a geared uh, brushed motor that plugs in here to provide the power for the model. Because the parts and electronics is fixed to the power system, it's not easy to add additional motors. You lit, you're uh, limited to that amount of thrust, but again, as you'll see in the videos, if you look at the Aronka, Pilatus Porter, other models that I built, the, the Arrow was a good example we just saw. There is certainly adequate power to make these a very suitable backyard flyer, just keeping the weight under three ounces. The next one is the medium class of models. I actually tried to build this originally with the Park Zone system in there. The model came in at three ounces. Due to the short nose moment, I had to add seven tenths of an ounce nose weight <clears throat> to balance it at the center of gravity. It was simply too heavy to fly. So I took out the Park Zone and put in 
regular RC um, electronics. What I used was the Altitude Hobbies, I'll put a card up here, A1504 brushless motor. Again, details will be in the description. This is a nice little brushless motor, very tiny and compact. And um, it can provide power for model up to eight ounces. So it was ideal for the Guilos conversion. Notice also the very easy radial mounting, nice little metal bracket and back. It's all contained in one unit. It's just a very nice little motor. So this is the motor that I use. I use a standard electronic speed control. This is a Talon 25, but a, a, a Talon 15 would be fine for this. On Stevens Zero, they even have smaller ESC, something up to about 10 amps. For the receiver, for the electronic speed control, for the receiver, I really, really like the Spectrum AR620s or really any of the newer Spectrum uh, receivers. What is nice about these receivers, they're small, lightweight, compact. Notice there's no antenna. The antenna is built in, which I really, really like, and to bind it, you've got the bind plug right there. You power this up, press this button once, it goes into the bind mode, and it matches, it mates up very quickly with whatever you're doing. The servos for these medium ones, I like the high-tech HS40 servos. You can see, this is a very small servo. You get them on Amazon, Horizon Hobby, and I have two servos in the Zero, one for the uh, ailerons, the other is for the elevator. Discussing the Hellcat, again, a little bit bigger model, and details will be in the uh, description, but for the Hellcat, I had the E-Flight Park 370 electrical motor that's good for bottles up to 12 ounces which works fine for this case the same talent ESC and I used a little bit bigger servos I use the high-tech um, HS 55 servos for the Hellcat again they're just small lightweight servos and I think they provide a little bit extra power for the ailerons and elevator could you use the uh, HS 40 probably but I think a little bit bigger one for the Hellcat uh, that'll work out fine for the Zero and the Hellcat, I use a two-cell uh, LiPo battery. This is a Thunder Power TP325 two-cell pack, and uh, this provides easily seven minutes of flight, depending on the throttle. Very lightweight battery, good for these um, types of models. One design point I do want to highlight for these aircraft are the center of gravity. And for straight-wing models, typically the center of gravity is about 25% back from the leading edge. When I look at one of these kits for a conversion, I look at how far the nose is out from the leading edge. We call this the nose moment, the distance. This is a very short nose moment. So you have to do everything you can to jam all the electronics up front to keep as much weight forward. This location cut across here is for the battery because it was a retrofit. With a little bit larger models for the center gravity, with the Hellcat, there's a pretty reasonable nose moment here. The motor's a little bit heavy. But what happened was I built the hatch, this entire hatch here, and I knew the center of gravity would have to be determined, and that would be for the battery. So I set it up that the battery actually goes back here to provide the, the proper center of gravity. Again, it's a little bit easier with the bigger models. So you see my receiver and the elevator servo. And on this one, the aileron servos, individual servos that I have um, on the bottom. I mentioned at the beginning I'd show you the Guilos catalog. This is a very nice uh, flying model catalog. And what happens is all the Guilos kits are in here. So the World War I or their Series 200 models, I haven't built any of those yet. Those could probably work with the Park Zone Electronics, although with the second wing you may have to get into the regular servos ESC. These are the medium, uh, the lightweight category, under three ounces. That was the Ironka Champ that I showed you. Also, you can see the videos I've done the P6 Porter. All of these are very logical, uh, these Series 300 kits for the Park Zone Microelectronics. I believe all of these could come in at under three ounces flying weight. And high wing training type aircraft, I think, they'll fly well. The Zero is on the 400 series. That was one I mentioned. You start to have to have the regular. Um, separate components, an electric motor, because they come out heavier just due to the size of the aircraft. One other thing to keep in mind, as I mentioned, the center of gravity, when I look at the P-51 Mustang or the P-40 Warhawk, there's a very large, uh, long nose moment. You could actually have a case where the, motor, where the model comes out nose heavy. Just keep that in mind if you build one of these. 
The Series 500s, again, Hellcat, Fark Wolf, P40, they're similar to these, except they're much smaller. Uh, this P40 has a 28-inch wingspan, same as the Zero. Notice this one has a 16-and-a-half-inch wingspan, a considerably smaller model of the Series 500s. Good kit, just it's a smaller model of the Park Zone equipment for sure if you're going to do that. This is the uh, Lancer and Arrow, two of their Series 600 and 700 Series contest flyers. Wonderful kits for RC flight because they're built to fly. And the final one I wanted to uh, point out was their Series 1000 giant scale World War II. This is the Hellcat that I showed you, span of 33 inches. All of these would make wonderful candidates for RC flight, again with the bigger Park 370 motor and the electronics. But um, Hellcat for sure, uh, Dauntless, all of these have tons of room inside for your electronics and um, power and control systems. Thank you again for joining me in this video. Good luck with the Aguilos conversions. All the details of the servos, ESC motors, where to get them, etc. will be in the description. And good luck with your Aguilos RC conversion.